So, but I think this is important with natural immunity and why people in, in these, these experts have tried to act like it doesn't exist because, and I think you were gonna ask this question, they think if you tell people recovery from COVID provides strong protection, that some people say, oh, I might as well just go get infected, I have that. And I don't think most people would do it, but even if someone does, you have to say the truth to people. You can't tell noble lies to try to get them to behave in a way that you think you want them to behave in. And so we see that time and time again on this issue of natural immunity, clearly, if this wasn't something that was durable, you'd have massive reinfections uh, by now. And so that's just the reality. I think if you look at what's going to mediate future waves, that natural immunity is going to be a huge part of it. We have a lot of people who are vaccinated and they're getting infected, mostly mild. That is building immunity effectively as well. Uh, but, but I think Joe understands, no noble lies. You tell the truth on what the data is saying. You don't and the same thing with the treatment and the antibodies. Part of the reason when I rolled out the antibodies, we were in the midst of a wave, okay? People like Fauci said if 50% were vaccinated, you would have no more surges. We had that. In fact, our seniors were over 90%, and yet you see admissions going up. So what do you do? And people were saying, well, most of these people aren't vaccinated who are being admitted. True, 100%. I wish that they had been. I think many of them probably wouldn't have been admitted. At the same time, when you're in the midst of a wave, you can vaccinate immediately. It doesn't kick in for weeks, probably six weeks after that. So what are you gonna to do to help people in the meantime? And we were seeing people who were vaccinated getting infected. We hoped that it would produce sterilizing immunity. Remember the Pfizer trial, 95% reduction. That's clearly not happening. I mean, we look around, uh, people are getting infected. The role that vaccinated people play in spreading it, I don't know, but I can tell you, I think every state in the country had higher cases this summer than they did last summer when no one was vaccinated. So it'd be hard for me to think it's only occurring amongst a small slice. So nevertheless, we saw that and we knew our most vulnerable people overwhelmingly were vaccinated. So what do you do? Well, we had an effective treatment that's been emergency use since the end of 2020. It was used on the president of the United States to help him recover from COVID. This is something that many of our hospitals were using but it was something that almost none of these people being admitted to the hospital even knew about. Many physicians, uh, as of last month, were still telling people, okay, go home, hope you don't get deathly ill. If you get deathly ill, then go to the hospital. There was never any interest or, or belief that they, this should be treated or even could be treated. I don't know why, but I do think that one of the reasons why this was not something that was put out there very publicly by the experts and by the powers that be in, in D.C. is because they feared that if you tell people there's an effective treatment, if you tell people COVID's a treatable illness, they feared some people would say, well, you know, maybe I won't get vaccinated. I'll just get the treatment. And so they didn't want that message out because they feared how people would behave. And my view is we've always said it complements. If you want to cover all your bases, do it as a compliment. But you can't not tell people that this is something that's available. And so the result is when we started doing our push, I was attacked for it, saying you're not supposed to do it. Uh, we did it. We raised awareness, which is very important. And then we expanded access. Um, and the result has been, I think we're at, what, 29 straight days where the hospital census has declined, 8% reduction in the census uh, this, as of this morning, uh, ED visits. This is all tanking. And um, it was the right thing to do. Now you have other states where they're now following Florida's lead. I get people, people will write into the office here from these other states thanking me because they didn't know about this. And so they started uh, bothering some of their doctors in these other states to be able to get this. Uh, so having the treatment is the right thing to do. I think increasingly as we see more vaccinated people test positive again, I think most of the time it's going to be a mild case and you're probably not going to need this but we are seeing some very vulnerable people uh, who have been saved for this. And if you look at some of the places, I mean, Miami, I think it's like 60 some percent of the people that have gone to our treatment site in Dade have been vaccinated. Um, Broward is I think 52%. Some of the other sites, more, more rural areas, the majority are unvaccinated. And I'd say overall, you know, you're looking at 40 to 45% of the people statewide that have gotten this treatment have been vaccinated who were either infected or were exposed and are in high risk situations. So telling the truth, I think is important. And I think that's what Dr. Ladapo understands that you gotta tell people the truth and you gotta let them make decisions. They may not always make the decision that you want them to make, 
but I think that's much better than pulling the wool under the eyes. Now, we have a situation in Florida now where in spite of this data, where we see far fewer people being admitted to the hospital, thankfully, uh, we're seeing people kept out, we're seeing lives saved. Uh, the Biden administration has dramatically cut the share of Imanic. First of all, they seized control of the supply nationwide, and now they're dramatically cutting uh, what's coming to the state of Florida. That's wrong. That is dead wrong. And why are they targeting Florida? Biden, he loves talking about Florida. He hates Florida more than anything. And this is absolutely going to hurt people. We're going to work like hell to make sure that, that anyone who needs it, we're going to figure out ways to be able to do. I hope to have an announcement on that soon. Um, but how could you cut it uh, given all the things that we're seeing on the ground? And you don't even need, you can look at the hospital data. It's very compelling. Just talk to people that have gotten this treatment. Talk to them about how they were feeling, where they feared this was going to end up, and then what happened after they were able to get, to get the treatment. It's been something that's benefited thousands and thousands and thousands of Floridians. They say there's no supply problem, but they're doing this anyway for temporal equity. I think it's because they fear a similar wave happening in some of these other parts of the, of the country later on in the year. But if they're not, if they don't have enough of it, then that's mismanagement on their part because this is something that's very significant. Um, I know they did another deal with Regeneron, but they should absolutely be sourcing the needs. Now, fortunately, our sites are down probably 40% 40, 40 uh, from the peak in terms of the people going in because we have fewer people that need it right now, which is good, and hopefully that continues to go down. But why would you cut it now, uh, given the success that we've seen? So we're going to absolutely fight back against this. Uh, we have ways to, to go around it potentially, and so hopefully we'll be able to, to finalize that. Uh, but cutting these treatments is wrong. And there's a time for politics. I get that. Um, but, you know, to be so obsessed with trying to kneecap Florida any way you can that you would take away life-saving treatments, I'm sorry, something should be beyond politics. I don't know who the hell is going to our sites. I don't know their political affiliation. We just want to help people, and obviously Joe Biden feels differently.